Hey everybody, uh, we're back. We're still looking at bonding this week. Uh, last week we looked at ionic bonding, which uh, we learned was the transfer of electrons between atoms. And this week we look at covalent bonding. Uh, you guys already reviewed the PowerPoint uh, where you read some of the notes. Basically the key word with covalent bonding is sharing of electrons. So in other words, these things aren't getting transferred anymore. Uh, they're gonna get shared between atoms. Uh, the name of the game is still the same. They're still trying to get that full outer shell. And if they can do that, they're completely happy. Uh, uh, this time they're just gonna share electrons in order to make that happen. So we're gonna kinda go through and show you how that takes place. Uh, here's the uh, periodic table that we labeled out last week. Uh, and we learned where these charges came from based on the position of the electrons. And so um, to talk covalent bonding, uh, we can still use those electron cloud diagrams. <clears throat> and that's gonna be kinda the, uh, the starting point for this week. Uh, if you remember those from last week, and I'm going to kind of show you a couple of these maybe. Um, if you remember the electron cloud diagrams, basically those showed the position of all of the electrons that an atom has. And the first step to that was looking at the periodic table, finding the element that we were talking about. So if we were looking at sodium, uh, sodium is number 11 on the periodic table, which means it has 11 protons. And that also meant that it has 11 electrons. And last week we discussed on how to tell where those electrons are parked. And we basically kind of went through and we draw, drew some of these out. So if we're doing uh, sodium, we can just go ahead and draw this. Uh, and we can put the first shell. Remember that first shell can hold a maximum of two electrons. And so sodium we know has 11. So that inner shell, of course, is going to be full. Uh, and so we need a second shell here. Second shell can hold up to eight electrons, and we've got to draw a total of 11 dots here. So this one's going to be full as well. So I'm going to just draw these in here, three, four, seven, eight, as long as I counted right. Uh, now we have 10 electrons represented on our electron cloud diagram, which means we need one more, and we're out of parking spots. So I'm going to try to squeeze this in here, and it doesn't really matter where we put it. There is the last one. So now we have 11 electrons on that sodium atom, one of those being in the outer shell. And if you remember our talk from last week, um, scoot this down, this column we said has a plus one charge because it has an extra electron. And right there it is. That extra electron, basically uh, sodium is looking to get rid of this. And if it can get rid of this electron, then it would be left with this shell, which is full. And so it looked to transfer this uh, to some other element. That was last week. So covalent bonding, we still deal with these position of electrons. So that hasn't changed at all. And electron cloud diagrams are still totally uh, legit. They're still totally great. Um, but we also introduced this new thing. Uh, and this new thing are called Lewis dot structures. Lewis dot structures. So you guys have already read about these, hopefully. Maybe it didn't make complete sense without this video, but that's what the video is all about. Uh, Lewis dot structures, um, it just basically was kind of a lazy way, almost an efficient way to represent these diagrams. Uh, as you guys drew these out last week, they get a little bit annoying uh, drawing all of these dots. And you might have come to the realization, and if not, I'm going to help you with that, that really the only thing that matters is, is this outer shell. That's going to kind of dictate what's going to happen in terms of bonding. And so the idea behind these Lewis dot structures is they said, all right, forget all these dots, forget drawing all these clouds and stuff like that. Really all we're concerned with are the, is the outer layer and how many electrons are there. And so uh, these are a diagram just like these guys up here, but now they just display how many electrons are in the outermost shell. So if we're looking at sodium and we want to draw a Lewis dot structure, the way this looks is we still put in A and now we just put one dot and that one dot signifies that it's got one electron in its outermost shell. And that's it. Um, we can do this for any of the elements that we talked about last week. So let's look at uh, beryllium. So if we do the electron cloud diagram for beryllium, beryllium we know has four electrons. So inner shell can hold two. And we need an outer shell now. And that one can hold the, the two that we need to draw to, to get up to four, So since we need four electrons. So now we've got four total electrons. Look in the outer shell. Here it is, right? 
Here's the outermost show. It's got two. And so when we draw the Lewis dot structure, that's all the dots that we're going to put. So we're going to have BE. And now we've got two. Um, these can be drawn a lot of different ways. We can just do it like that. Um, and that would be the Lewis dot structure for beryllium. So these are actually a lot easier. If you knew what you were doing with the electron cloud diagrams, you could still draw these out to see how many are in the outer shell. Or you can just say, hey, I know what these, these charges mean. I mean that I know that this has an extra electron in the outer shell. So all of these Lewis dot structures will just have one electron dot for the Lewis dot structures. This is plus two. That meant two extras. So these will all have plus two. So basically, this is what the first column will look like. This is what the second column will look like. The uh, noble gases, remember, have full outer shells. So these ones are already filled up. So let's look at maybe uh, helium, and we can do neon for the Lewis dot structures. Helium, let's put it uh, right here. If we did the electron cloud diagram, it's number two on the periodic table. So it's got two electrons, boom, boom. And remember that, that innermost shell can only hold two. So helium has a full outer shell. It's completely happy. That's what makes it a noble gas. So that's why it's got two here. And so we can come down here and do the Lewis dot structure and put helium. And just depending on how we want to draw it, there's the two dots. It's a noble gas. It is completely happy, uh, even though it only has two dots here, because those two dots, those two electrons fall in its outer shell. So noble gas. We're going to compare that with neon. Here's neon. Neon from the periodic table, we can tell, has 10 electrons, two in the innermost shell, and then the outermost shell has eight. So there's eight. It's got a full outer shell. It's not looking to combine with anything else. Uh, its dot structure is going to look like this. So that's the most dots that a Lewis dot structure can contain is eight. Um, they have to, this kind of shows you the, the possible parking places for these dots. Uh, you can have two up top, two on each side, and then two down below. And you have to follow that pattern. You couldn't have uh, done the Lewis dot structure for neon and done something like this. So, so you've still got, you've got eight dots here and the idea is right. Uh, but at some point they decided this is the way that that's actually going to be drawn out. Uh, and so make sure you, you just use these parking spots when you're actually drawing these things out. Um, so that's the, uh, the general idea with Lewis dot structures. Um, you know, still stick with what you learned last week in terms of the electron cloud diagrams. We could maybe do uh, fluorine. And so if we do the electron cloud for fluorine, we know we need a, uh, nine electrons. So here's fluorine. We're just going to fill these out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's missing one. That's what the minus one charge means. Uh, and so when it comes to writing out the Lewis dot structure, this thing has seven uh, electrons in its outer shell. So it's going to have seven dots. It's going to look like this. So there's the Lewis dot structure for that. So... Anyway, look this over. Uh, try the uh, try the worksheet. Let me know what kind of questions you guys have. Basically, just kind of looking at these Lewis dot structures this week and getting that down. It's kind of a big step. Um, so yeah, check it out. Let me know if you guys have questions. See ya.